Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to my channel, The Mother Speaks Tarot. My name is Allison. My channel is still pretty new. It's just over a year old. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you've already subscribed and if you subscribe today, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It really, really helps me out. Um, you know, subscribed or not welcome. I appreciate every last one of you. For those of you who are new and don't know, I'm also an author. Yay. I'm writing a series. It's an action adventure love story on superhero twin flames called Perception, the two yet one. This is book one, which I've read aloud live on Facebook and uploaded all those videos here to YouTube for you to enjoy for absolutely free. Just know that book two is already published and available for those of you who are interested. All the links that you need for my books are in the description box below, as well as um, the information to contact me if you would like a personal reading. Okay, so welcome and welcome back. As quickly as I can, I will describe what I'm doing this week. I got the imagery or the messages about which decks to use this week very early last week, and it was a little confusing to me, but, you know, I'm not second-guessing myself anymore. I'm listening to spirit. And so when um, I grabbed these decks, uh, if, if you know me, you know that I like my decks to um, kind of match or, you know, have some of the same message, be, be on the same page, you know. Um, so when I got these, I was a little confused, but I'm not anymore. I understand now. This is the Tarot of the Divine Tarot that I'm using this week. It's by Yoshi Yoshitani. Um, it's inspired by deities, folklores, and fairy tales from around the world. It's one of my favorite decks. It's so beautiful. And I love all the, um, all the, the art in it. Um, also, if I need to clarify, I'll be using the Tarot of the Cloisters by Michelle Leavitt. And here's where I got a little confused. Um, I'm going to be pulling some cards from the Past Life Oracle deck by Doreen Virtue and Brian Weiss. Uh, I got this deck just to uh, do personal readings with. I, I didn't ever uh, plan on using these for my general readings because I feel like past lives are so personal. But, you know, Spirit called for it, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to second guess you. Um, you know, I did get the little pocket version that doesn't have the book, so I won't be reading from any book for this. I've been um, just reading these intuitively, which has w been working fine. And then um, I'm also going to pull a card or two from the Whispers of Lord Ganesha deck by Angela Hartfield with the sumptuous uh, artwork of Ekaterina Golovanova. Again, she, um, Angela Hartfield and Ekaterina Golovanova also uh, collaborated on the Whispers of the Ocean deck that I was using with the Mermaid uh, Tarot. So what, um, what I'm noticing is, is that... Um, you know, I like to use the energies uh, that a deck was created with. And so the tarot of divine, the divine has been giving me the messages that are needed, you know. And so, I'm, you know, this, it's just the things that spirit wants to say, you know. And it does connect with past lives. It does connect with Ganesha. There are deities in here as well. So what this has been doing is this has been telling you all what energies, what karma you're dealing with currently from your past lives, but it's also, uh, these cards have also been telling me about your current life, the energies um, that you're facing in, in your current life as well. And then um, Lord Ganesha here is giving us, um, you know, guidance about our spiritual path, okay? So which leads me uh, to another thing that I'm Kind of putting into my um, opening spiel here on my channel is that the kind of reader I am. I'm a, I'm a twin flame reader. I'm all about the balancing of the masculine and the feminine, and um, being on a spiritual mission consciously and every single day. Like, um, I, I gave my life to God when I was nine. I said, I, you know, I'm here for everyone. I'll do what you need me to do. This was before I learned that there was even a goddess, you know, and um, then at, when in my early 20s, a very powerful psychic told me I was a twin flame. I had no idea what she was talking to, about until I hit uh, my late 30s and um, became part of a divine union. And so that's how I was led here. Because I consciously walk um, the path to enlightenment, um, my life is uh, devoted to changing things on this planet for the better, for everyone, for the entire universe as well, you know, the entire planet. And so, um, 
you don't have to feel like you're a twin flame, but if you are at least walking in divinity each day, consciously uh, working on yourself, your self-love, um, getting rid of things like um, victim consciousness, and, and understanding that you have a divine blueprint, which I'll explain, um, then that's fine. You don't have to be a divine couple. You don't have to believe in the twin flame. I'm just saying that that is a term that kind of is explaining this divine couple because when um, you uh, raise your vibration by consciously walking this path to uh, enlightenment, you, um, when you balance your energies, you attract uh, a counterpart. And so then you end up in a divine couple. So there you go. It's just, it's that kind of thing. You just, you know, you're working on your enlightenment each day, which leads to how I read my cards, okay? So as a reader, I read minor arcana cards as messages about your free will. I read major arcana cards as messages about your divine blueprint, okay? That is the plan that you, as your higher self, um, wrote before you incarnated so that you would encounter and hopefully learn certain important lessons of life that when learned raise the vibration and wisdom that is encoded in your soul. Now because of our free will and its power it is possible to lower in vibration during a lifetime but if you can manage to rise in vibration lifetime after lifetime or even significantly during one lifetime such as this one you may be able to reach what we call enlightenment like Buddha and Jesus and Toth and, and Isis and many others that we know affected a great deal of positive change on our planet. So when I'm looking at your major arcana cards, it's a lot like looking at your destiny, but it isn't exactly because of the power of our free will. There are times that things happen in our lives that have, we have had no control over whatsoever. We do write those into our divine blueprint that way. Those times are indicated to me by the Wheel of Fortune card or an unusually high number of um, major arcana cards, which you don't have either, okay? So let's finally get started here. At the heart of everything for you at this time, Scorpio, you've got fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. This is the Nine of Wands. This is the wounded warrior energy, but this is the story of Vasilisa. Vasilisa, you see, this is a sweet, delicate um, very pretty young girl and um, somebody I, th I think she had like wicked sisters or something I'm not sure but they sent her off to go live with a witch that they knew would be very hard on her and uh, they, they thought that it was going to break her to send her the, to this place I mean look at this this there's flaming skulls on poles here but look at her face uh-huh she doesn't look scared just because someone looks uh, gentle, just because someone is mild or meek, doesn't mean that they're not strong. Vasilisa made it through all of this. She surprised everybody. Now, the wounded warrior is somebody who's been through a lot of battles and they can be a bit defensive, but this also means that she's got a lot of experience here now. She knows what she's doing. And she's just standing there right now because she is resting for a minute because she is getting ready for the next battle, which would be the Ten of Wands, okay? So fire is passion, energy. You can see there's like a little bit of anger on her. She's, she's passionate. She's intense. She is not going to be brought down. Now, this is the energy that is crossing this energy, and it is the Ten of Swords. Again, we have this story about where our family has like turned against us here okay this is the story of Sedna she was tossed into the ocean by her father and when she tried to get back onto his canoe he chopped off her fingers this is a very sad story of betrayal and being stabbed in the back those are like harpoons and she sank to the bottom of the ocean but I believe she became um, a mermaid I have her in one in my legendary ladies decks so um, what this is, is you've, you've, or you've been like this, there's a little bit more of this coming, okay? Or, no, 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 here's what it is, they say that there's been a lot of backstabbing and now you are really, um, experienced. The Ten of Swords, all tens are endings, 
Okay, now it's really over when it's in the reverse. However, when you have the card that is crossing these, this first card, which is what is at the heart of everything, is your defensive um, attitude where you, you know you got one last battle to fight, but you can do this mm -hmm, because you may look uh, real sweet and all that, but you are tough. Um, it's because of all this. There's been hurtful things said, um, maybe some sharp words. It's not quite over. This is always read right side up when it's crossing that. So it's not quite over. It won't be over until it's like this. When you get this in um, your environment card or, or the outcome eventually, you know, then, then that'll be really over. But right now I feel like you're expecting more of this backstabbing. I think that you are very um, defensive at this time. So what we got down here is the root of everything. Um, there's some stagnation going on. This is your card. Scorpio, the death card, the birth, death and rebirth card. But when it's in the reverse, um, stuff isn't changing. So I feel like you're feeling pretty stagnant here. You're feeling um, stuck, stuck in this stagnation of waiting for another um, stab at you. You're stagnating in this, this energy waiting for more of this to happen but it's telling you it's over uh-huh okay so another thing that spirit has been doing for me is taking imagery from the cards and showing me the similarities and where how these images connect i'm sure you can see it you've got a skull here a great big skull here and you got all these skulls here the skull is in red. These are all on fire on red pulse. You've got this type of, um, uh, this is the trees going on in the corners here. And then you've got the like curtains doing the same thing. This is all in the dark. There's something behind the dark there. Okay, you have a single lovely looking young girl in each one. They, they, they both look um, very innocent. They both look very um, naive, but they're not. I mean, I, I, I don't know the whole story of this bear king here, but she is brave enough to look behind that curtain, right? So there's this element of really scary stuff going on around this very gentle feminine but she's not as gentle as she looks she she's strong okay but you're stagnating in in like waiting for more of this backstabbing i'm thinking your true energy is like this you know where things end and become reborn they're rebirthed they're renewed so right now for you to be like this um that makes a lot of sense to me because of this energy here. You're waiting. Wounded warriors are often very defensive. Sometimes they're always waiting for that last battle. And this is another thing that um, Spirit is showing me is how they reflect. You see, like if there was the mirror here, how it kind of, they reflect when one is upside down and one is right side up. Okay, so here is the um, energy that is in your recent past that is moving out of your life at this time. And what we have here is the Lady, uh, Our Lady Guadalupe of Guadalupe. Okay, um, she's, she's the Empress. This is the feminine, uh, divine feminine energy itself. Okay, like everything that is divine feminine. When she's in the reverse, though, this is a distorted feminine energy, okay? And this, while she is um, loving and nurturing and kind and abundant and um, generous, this is greedy and paranoid and bitter and manipulation and all kinds of negative things. But this particular empress in the reverse, focuses on smothering mother energy, 
okay? So that, I feel, is the actual message there. You are getting out of this smothery mother energy. So there's a kind of, um, there's a message there from feeling persecuted by your own family, right? Okay, so the next two cards here for me as a reader are future cards. We'll start with this one. What we have here is the King of Wands. Wands is fire energy. Again, this is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, fire energy. This king, I'll just show it to you right side up. This king, I believe, is the phoenix. Uh-oh, I gotta look that up. Is he the phoenix? He is, isn't he? Because that's your energy. You see it? It is. It is the phoenix. Check it out. The phoenix from East Asia, East Asian mythology. Yeah. That's you. Okay, now this is fire energy. This is masculine energy. So it's your masculine energy is in the reverse. Now, this doesn't mean this is you, but what I'm saying is, is the phoenix energy is you because the phoenix dies and is rebirthed over and over again. And that is basically what your death card means. Okay, so there's that connection with this energy. If this is not you, then this is almost like an appeal from spirit to look at this and see uh, yourself in this person. Wow, weird. Not weird, but hmm, that is something I did not expect. But anyway, since I'm here on the page, I'll go ahead and read you the reversed meaning. Tyranny, a lack of harmony, weakness, and volatility. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's somebody, it could be a fire sign, but it could be a parent, okay? Someone, it doesn't, this is the sacred feminine, but this is also the nurturing energy. See, so what you've got here is this masculine energy and then the sacred feminine, okay? So this is not the emperor, but because he is the king of wands and the emperor is Aries energy, which is fire energy, I feel like this is kind of very close. But um, this, this could be a boss, Okay, there could be somebody at work who is very, um, what is, what is the term? That when you, when you manage everything, oh man, what is the term? Hang on, I'm going to pause while I figured that out. Micromanager, micromanaging, Okay. So somebody um, is, you know, in micromanaging, smothering, uh, somebody being tyrannical, somebody just like always in your face. Now, wands um, represents career. So this could be uh, your career. Um, this could be your boss. You know what I mean? Let's see what else we get here. So you're stagnating in this this energy here that is just not right here. That's not uh, very comfortable for you, Scorpio. I'm sorry to see this. Now, the next card you've got here is the Six of Swords, but it's in the reverse. Um, the Six of Swords is moving on from choppy waters to calmer waters. This is another story of like tyrannical parents, okay? This is, this, this is Princess Danae. And um, Zeus came down to her in a shower of gold and seduced her. And she ended up having Perseus here. And so her father kicked her out, put them both in a box and threw them in the ocean. Thanks, Dad. Mm -hmm. um, talk about tyrannical. Uh, and a king. Huh. Yep, and a king. Um, but uh, this is you in the reverse, basically um, staying in it. I'm thinking, uh, let me see what this says in the reverse for this particular deck. Maybe a, uh, what is that? That's swords. Maybe a, a, a specific word will stick out to me. But basically it's, no, it's pretty much the same. It means, 
exactly what I was about to say. I'll read it to you anyway. It says feeling trapped, instability, canceled travel, maybe, um, abuse. Yeah, with all this tyranny and shit and unresolved issues. Yeah, you're just feeling trapped. You, you know, you're not moving on. You know, these cards are meaning a multitude of things now, too. It's almost getting confusing for me because I'm feeling how they mean a bunch of stuff at once. This is also, you're, you're not, this is saying here that, like, you're experiencing this micromanager, this tyranny, because you're not moving on. You're not, uh, you're just staying stuck. You're just dealing with it, it instead of, um, flying free instead of letting it just burn away and becoming a new thing, becoming a new um, Scorpio who you are, you know, uh, redesigning your life. And all you're doing is staying stagnant in this energy and just waiting for somebody to, to hurt you again. Oh, Scorpio. Well, maybe you don't know what to do. You know, let's see what else we get here. Okay, so this is your hope. Wow. Um, I don't get this. This is temperance. This is more fire energy. This is Sagittarius energy. This is the card for being your own twin flame. This is when you've balanced your masculine and feminine energies and you give off a new um, energy. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning. Um, uh, when you are, it's, it's, it's hard to balance your masculine and feminine energies, but when you do manage to do that, when you can walk that fine line of patience and moderation, of following the rules of not too much and not too little of anything, and um, you do a lot of self-love and, and work on yourself, and you get to a place where you're like this bodhisattva, which is a, a Buddha, okay? Um, that's when you give off this energy and I call it glory and this glory will bring in someone else who is in your same vibration and that makes you a twin flame union. This is your own twin flame when you've balanced yourself and you've become your own twin flame you're completely balanced. So this is your hope Scorpio. You, it's like you're not hoping anymore. Yeah. I've, I feel like you, there's a part of you that's giving up on, on even your own energy. It's painful to burn up. But, I mean, look, remember in Harry Potter when Fox the Phoenix was starting to look real bad and Dumbledore's like, oh, the man, he's looking real bad. And, you know, I, I feel like that's where you're at right now. It's time for you to burn. It's time for you to rebirth yourself. Use your own energy to get yourself out of this stagnation where all you're doing is being smothered and, and, and people are treating you like Vasilisa here. And, and you know, this, is, this isn't good. I'm going to go ahead and um, see what this temperance in reverse says for, in this particular tarot to see if this is, if it has anything new. No, not really. This is, it says conflict, hostility, frustration, impatience, and reluctance. So th this is not a hope. This is the more of what's going on here. I feel like you've given up. But how could you be giving up on the future when you're in your own energy? Okay, um... So, like, this is the third card of you. Queen of Cups is Scorpio. Scorpio. Phoenix, which is Scorpio. Um, man. Okay, I get it. I get it now. at it now. You're Vasilisa. Okay. Vasilisa is sweet, kind, gentle, lovely, like this, this little girl. Okay. These, these two kind, loving, gentle,
feminine energies. This is, this is the part of you that you're in right now. And yes, you're a queen, man or woman, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is your feminine energy is good. Your feminine energy is good right now. Okay, um, but I would like you to remember, this is why spirit chose this card. People thought Vasilisa was going to be defeated by this witch being so hard on her. But I believe what Vasilisa did was she, she conquered it. She became so much more than anybody could have ever expected her. She became a queen. I bet. I don't know the story, but right now that's what I feel like. Because when, you're, when people set challenges to you because they think you're one thing, but you're actually stronger than they thought, what happens is you use your strength and you grow because of their challenges and you become something better than you were. You become stronger. That which does not kill you makes you stronger. That which does not kill your gentleness makes you shine brighter. Your royalty, your loving, your kind, your intuitive, but you're no shrinking violet. You're tough AF. They just didn't know that. They're going to find out, aren't they, Scorpio? Now, this is your fear card. Four of coins in the reverse. This is letting go. This is releasing whatever you've been holding on to tightly. And what is, what is that? Well, we've got some smothering energy here. This is the story of the vulture's wife. The vulture decided this poor girl here was going to be his wife, and he just, just took her and won't let her go. Look at how happy he looks. He looks pretty happy. She doesn't. He's hoarding. He's jealous. He's, um, this is tyranny. This is smothering energy. See this hummingbird in the background? That's freedom. That's magic. It's way in the background. It's far away from what's going on here. There's a part of you that is now... So you're so strong that now you're afraid to let go of this. You've mastered this energy. But now you don't now you're afraid to let go. It's kind of like um what is that syndrome where people are like kidnapped and they develop this um relationship with their kidnapper and they don't want to leave. I don't know. I don't remember right now what that syndrome is called. Um, but that's what I'm feeling from this. It's like if Vasilisa was able to survive this witch and the witch finally told her, you can go now, this would be like Vis uh, Vasilisa saying, no, I'm scared. Are you kidding me? This is what the witch would say. What? What do you mean you're scared? You just went through everything that I threw at you and you just handled it like a champ. You were not this shrinking violet little, uh, little sweet thing that everybody thought you were. You are capable of, you survived everything I threw at you and you're telling me that you're scared to leave this place now? Okay, this is obviously past life stuff, okay? Now, this is your potential outcome, and, and judgment is like when it's time. It's time to make a decision. It's time to make a judgment. It's time for rebirth. Resurrection. 
in a way this is another card for me of your card oftentimes in the judgment card you'll see the angel calling everybody and they start to come out of their graves because it's time to be resurrected it's time to become this new being and yet both of your cards you're just not having it and it's because of this energy this is the underlying energy of this whole read you're feeling really left out in the cold you're feeling very alone you're feeling rejected this is the story of the little match girl and back in the old days there used to be little children running around on the street trying to fend for themselves this little girl was trying to sell matches just to stay alive she doesn't have any shoes look at her out in the cold she's not asking for any help from this church but then again maybe they threw her out this is you um, focusing on your cup being half empty instead of half full you're feeling very this is a very sad and and kind of a negative reading Scorpio and um, yeah you're stagnating this hanged man here um, life and suspension this is sleeping beauty um, another thing where, where somebody is gentle and kind and they get jacked up by somebody else who is kind of part of their family what the heck uh, king of coins in the reverse like your foundation is was upturned but this there was some sort of enlightenment that you got you got a change of perspective here at one point but now this is how you're feeling all alone <sighs> Yeah, this is um, this is past life stuff, but this is also I just I just heard abandonment. Um, this is feeling of abandonment. This is feelings of you know I've been um, in this past life deck. I've been getting a lot of uh, at least a couple of times, two or three times. I've been getting the card of orphan. Um, the orphan card is like this uh, because you know the little match girl does she have any brothers and sisters I don't know it doesn't look like it she looks like an orphan to me so I'm already feeling this orphan energy from your past life you may have been an orphan in your past lives in several of your past lives you may have lost a parent or both during this lifetime as well However, you, you do have these uh, smother mother energy and tyrannical father energies going on up here. So I don't know. Let's see what's up. get any cards if I don't say anything can you please tell me what's um, past lives thank you there's one can you please tell me what past lives um, I'm gonna go one more time here okay what, what can we tell Scorpio about this this energy here okay let's see what we got oh whoa Wow. Okay, so you were somebody in the Bible. In the Bible. Now, that can be pretty heavy stuff. You may not even know, but you know what I'm feeling from the Bible right now? The, the story of Joseph. Joseph was a beautiful young man he was connected to spirit you are scorpio you're the most intuitive um he was kind very very much vasilisa energy here i think it may have been her 
mothers or sisters who sent her there. Let me look it up in the little book here. Um, Wands. Wands is in the back. Here it is. Be Vasilisa the Beautiful. This is a Russian tale. The Nine of Wands represents weathering the battle sent by her wicked stepmother to the door of the witch Baba Yaga. Vasilisa the Beautiful stays resilient. She endures Baba Yaga's impossible trials. She is wary and cautious, but also hopeful. Okay, so yeah, it's her, it's her wicked stepmother, but it's still family, okay? Now, it was, it was um, Joseph's brothers who were so jealous of him. I think he was the youngest. He was, you know, he was very gentle. The, their father, I think Joseph was his favorite because of how kind and gentle he was. And he had the coat of many colors. He had the gift of reading um, dreams and stuff like that. And so his brothers sent, just sold him as a slave to Egypt. But the thing was, is that they didn't realize that Joseph was that strong because he endured having to go to prison. He endured being per persecuted. And eventually he became the governor of Egypt because he was strong because of his faith because he walked with God. God gave him his messages. God ke um, kept him kind and gentle. And though he had a lot of tough challenges and a lot of horrible stuff happen to him, he eventually rose above and became the governor of Egypt. And then he was able to save his family's lives when there was a great famine. In fact, he saved millions of people's lives because he was able to read the, um, the Pharaoh's dream about um, um, a famine coming. Okay, so that's the story from the Bible that I'm getting. You may have very well have been Joseph. If not, this is the story they wanted you to hear because you can rise above all of this. You've got it in you. You are Vasilisa. You are not the little match girl. Period. The end. Okay. Now, also, there's a, there's a lot of people in the Bible that doesn't have to be famous people. You could be one of the people that begat somebody else. <laughs> there's a lot of so-and-so begat so-and-so and that so-and-so begat some, someone else. So, there's a lot of folks in, in the Bible. So you might, if it's not Joseph that you, you know who you are, you are somebody. If you, um, if you thought you may be somebody from the Bible, this is your answer. This is your verification on that, all right? Now let's see what uh, Ganesha is going to tell you, okay, how to take care of this, how to, how to get some hope back here, how to get things together because I'm sure Joseph felt very um, hopeless at times as well and it's okay to feel hopeless I, I hope you don't feel like I scolded you or anything here um, it's just that there's you just breathe through it okay you try to breathe through these times and just remember that um, you can have hope okay it's okay to hope Ganesha please please help um, Thank you so much. I feel like Ganesha could barely wait to help you out here. Okay. So we've got fulfillment and empowerment. Oh my God. Okay. So six is the number of love. And two plus three. Is that a three? It is. Two plus three equals five, which is change. This empowerment is going to bring the change that is you. That is your energy. Okay. Let's go ahead and read fulfillment. Because, you know, fulfillment feels really good. Oh, wow, it turned right to it. This is, I feel like this is Ganesha saying that you need some fulfillment here. No matter what you want to do or become, you will achieve more with knowledge. Oh. The image of Ganesha reading the scroll is a symbol of the importance of education and the pursuit of knowledge. This might mean there is a period of increased study and learning at hand. You may find you want to inquire about a field of study that has been widely explored and chose to go to an experienced teacher to learn more. So this is, um, this is feeling very much to me like the Hierophant energy. 
which is also five, which is also change. Look for someone to consult for more information. This may be a counselor, an author, a psychotherapist, or some spiritual advisor. That could be me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an author and a spiritual advisor. Um, you will discover new skills from this helpful teacher as they have the wisdom to provide excellent guidance and advice. Keep in mind, there is also a wealth of information at your fingertips in books. Everything you read fills your head with new information and you know when it, and when it might have a practical use. Oh, you never know when it might have a practical use. The more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to tackle any challenge that lies before you. Additionally, knowledge can never be taken from you. No matter what you're do, longing to do or become, you will benefit from gaining more knowledge. Approach this time with great curiosity and an open mind. So I feel like there's stuff that Ganesha says, go ahead and learn stuff because when you learn stuff, you feel better. Um, I went to uh, college at a late age and, you know, I hadn't gone to college before, but when I got my degree, let me tell you, I felt a lot of dignity. I felt a, a very accomplished and I felt a lot more dignity than I had before. I had a lot more self-respect and I also had the confidence to go ahead and start writing my book series because um, I, I didn't have that at first. Okay, so empowerment. This is the solar plexus chakra. This has to do with confidence. This is something that you need. You need to feel your strength, to know how strong you are and understand how powerful you are. Rely on your inner strength to ensure your dreams are realized. Okay, so now this is reminding me too that in the Toth deck, the nine of wands is called strength. Okay. The blessing of Ganesha is sensing your personal power, being confident, responsible, and reliable. The energy from this card is a feeling of optimism and positive energy. Dreams and long-term goals are becoming reality. If you have been lethargic or unmotivated, take time to tune into your personal power. Yellow is associated with the solar plexus chakra, which is the third chakra. This chakra is considered to be at the core of your being, your power center. Here is the home of your self-esteem, your willpower, self-discipline, and your personality. This is also why this is firepower. That's, um, solar plexus is, is the sun, which is Leo, a fire energy, okay? Ganesha is showing you that there is an important purpose for you in this lifetime on earth. You are awakening to your personal power and the memory of yourself as a soul. Your healing will be complete when you see the light of your soul and know that light is who you truly are. Every time you criticize yourself, you weaken your resolve. Loving and accepting yourself and acknowledging your value are the foundation of a balanced solar plexus. When the solar plexus chakra is in balance, you are confident and, and empowered with a healthy level of self-esteem. You have respect for yourself as well as respect for others. You have a strong sense of self and your personal power and you use it responsibly. Be confident in your talents. Love yourself. Be willing to powerfully express yourself. Choose to be direct with your desires at this time. If you are asking about a decision, all indications are that it is time. Wait, all indications are that the time to act is now. It is time. It is time. It is time. This is the sun. For the sun that is you, the sun that shines within you, it's time for it to shine. It's time for you to balance yourself. Self-love. Understand that you are a Buddha. All you have to do is balance out your energies to discover that. You know, uh, Joseph had confidence in his ability to read the dreams. And if he didn't have that confidence, he wouldn't have spoken to the Pharaoh and he wouldn't have become the governor. 
and he wouldn't have been able to save millions of people's lives. Okay, Scorpio, you don't know what you are capable of doing. You may be able to save millions of people's lives yourself. Okay, don't ever discount yourself. Now, how much uh, control do you have over this situation? I can gauge that by the number of major arcana to minor, and you have one, two, and three, and four. So almost half of this is your divine blueprint. This is a big challenge for you and your self-confidence. This is spirit saying to you, it's time for you to love yourself. It's time for you to be confident in who you are. It is time. It is time, Scorpio. You got this. All right, that's what I have for you at this time. See you next time.